Artificial intelligence keeps breaking new ground in photography, and now a new tool called Stable Diffusion will even let you generate images of pretty much anything you can imagine right inside Photoshop. You can even use it to help edit photos you've already taken. To use Stable Diffusion, you'll first need to create a Dream Studio account, which you can do for free at the link that I'll post below. And then you can generate images like these by setting the options at the right, such as the width and height of the image you want to create. I'll explain the rest of these later, especially this ability to work with another image you've already taken. And then down below, we enter a text prompt and click Dream. This text prompt is the entire basis of the creativity here. We give a description of the image we want to see, and this is what it creates. So I typed a 17th century Japanese home on top of a mountain surrounded by clouds, cinematic lighting, blue hour, stormy sky. And from that description, this is what Stable Diffusion came up with, which I think is absolutely incredible that an early stage beta can do something this good. And I can only imagine what we'll be seeing in two, three, five years from now. Now, of course, there are a lot of different ways you could take these words and translate them into a, an image of a scene. So if I click on Dream, then I'm asking Stable Diffusion to go back and re-envision this scene in a new way and give us something entirely different. And so for the second version, now it's showing us a vision from the inside of this home. And there are so many different ways it might create the scene. And we can just keep trying until we find our favorite version. Now, as much as I enjoy exploring in this web interface, I think they've done a nice job. I think it's even better in Photoshop. And we can do it in Photoshop thanks to the efforts of a guy named Christian Cantrell, who on his website has posted this free plugin for Photoshop that will let us interface with Stable Diffusion. So I'll post a link to his site down below. We just download the plugin follow the instructions to install, and then over in Photoshop, you'll find it under the plugins menu. We just open up his plugin. The only thing we need to do to get set up is to enter an API key because that's what connects this plugin back to our account on Dream Studio. Now in Dream Studio, you will need to be a paid member to use an API key, but I think it's very much worth it. And you just pay like 10 bucks and then go over to the membership area click for API key and click copy to copy your API key. Then go back to Photoshop and then just hit Command V or right click and paste to enter that API key and click save. And now it's connected, the plugin's ready to go and we can start generating art right here inside of Photoshop. I don't wanna bore you watching me type prompts, so I've already created some prompts in this text note and I'm just gonna copy from my notes and paste into the plugin. So I've got a prompt that asks for a man with a mohawk, purple suit, square sunglasses, oil painting. Just creating some sort of whimsical kind of fun image. And then I have some refining terms with muted colors, concept art, sharp focus, highly detailed, just some little things to help improve the result. We haven't talked about prompt strength yet, but the way that this works is as you slide it further to the left, you're giving the AI more discretion. It's being more general and whimsical from this description. And when you move it to the right, it's gonna be much more literal and sticking to the words as you've written them. I generally find that sticking with seven is actually great most of the time. So I oftentimes leave it at the default, but anywhere between about five and 15 is usually good. I wouldn't go to the far left or far right, it tends not to produce great results. For the number of images, we can increase this to get more images to kind of explore and sample all at once. We can quickly find our favorite. So I'm gonna kick that up to eight. I'm gonna change my dimensions so that the height is more appropriate for a portrait with 640. We'll come back to see later. This is a way of referencing an existing thumbnail we've already created. And we'll also come back to use document image. We'll show later how you can work from a photograph you already have. But what I wanna do is open up this show advanced options. And in here we have the steps. This is basically like a quality setting. And if we turn it down, we'll get results faster and cheaper. Every time we click dream, we're using a few credits based on the number of images, the dimensions, and then the steps. And so by turning this down, we'll just save a little bit of money while we're still exploring. And then we find a good version we like, we can turn up the steps and kind of finish off that version of the image. Don't worry about the sampler or the version. I really never change these. These options mostly don't do a lot. Some of them get kind of artsy, but a lot of them look the same. And then the version, this might be useful if you're just trying to recreate something you did previously with an old seed. So just leave these alone. I'm gonna click on Dream. And now based on these settings, it's gonna output a bunch of thumbnails below for us to choose from. And I can't see them very well, so I'm gonna go click and drag out the edge of the panel so I can see all my thumbnails. 
And I've got something that looked kind of interesting to me. I think some are a little mangled. This guy doesn't look right. This is a little strange, but this could be interesting possibly. And there's no way within this current version of the plugin, which is just 0 0.2 right now. It's not even a version one. I'm sure that this will be updated quite a bit in time. But for right now, the way we would want to view this full screen is to just put it into a dummy document. So I'm going to create a new document, say file new, and we'll just go with 1024 by 1024, which is the biggest thing that Stable Diffusion currently outputs. So that's perfect. Hold on spacebar and just move it to the side so we can see it over here. And now we can add these as layers into this document to view them. So if I want to go check out this version, I can click on layer. It's added as a layer in the document and I can see it over here and I can zoom in a bit and just really see how it looks. And I don't like this as I'm looking at it a little bigger. Maybe I want to check out this version. You know, that's, it's, it's okay. I don't love it. Let's generate some new ones. I'm going to click on dream and it's going to generate eight entirely new versions of the image for us. Give us something else to play with. So we'll take a look at this one. Let's zoom back a little bit. We can see it better. That could be interesting. I don't know about this one. Maybe it's a little, I mean, it's fine. It looks technically correct, but I don't think it's as interesting. Here we can see, sometimes you get these weird glitches, like it just kind of blurred out. And that's why you just have to keep iterating. Sometimes you get some weird things, extra limbs. It's an AI, it's not perfect. Let's click Dream again. Let's try a third round and see if we find something we like better. We can always come back to these if we want to. And in the history here, you see all the old versions. If you ever want to reference anything you've done before, so we can go find all the work we've done. I'm going to just keep moving forward here. Let's take a look at this guy. That's kind of quirky, kind of whimsical. Might like that. Or this one, uh, I kind of like that. I think that's my favorite so far. Yeah, I think, I think this previous one, I want to work with this one. Now, what we're generating here is pretty low resolution. The, the maximum we can go to is 1024. Even at that, it's, it's not super high resolution. And I'm sure this will get greatly expanded in the future. But for now, one of the challenges with this is just having low resolution. So I want to make this image a bit bigger and I want to make it higher quality. So the first thing we need to do is work on the quality and then we'll resize it from there. I want this image and the way that I can regenerate it with a higher number of steps for higher quality is I go click on seed. That takes the seed for this image and copies that number into this here. And when I run again with this, as long as I have the same dimensions and prompt, then I'm going to be getting something pretty close to what I have here. I don't need eight different variations because I would get this seed and seven other seeds. So I'm just going to pick one image, but I'm going to increase my quality, my steps up to 100 and click dream. So what I'm looking for here is a little bit higher quality version potentially of this image. And you know, at 25 steps, uh, the results tend to be pretty good. If you get too low, things can change quite a bit. 25 is usually okay, but sometimes going up to some of the 100 can get better. Let's take a look at that. And you see it's, it's pretty subtle, but there's definitely some differences here. I think the shading's changed. The beard has gotten shorter. The, you know, notice the, the collar on the shirt has changed. So stylistically, things can refine. The pockets changed. You can just choose which one you like. I think I like this version with these sharper edge glasses better, but I could always blend them with layer masks to combine the best of both. Let's work with this version. So now that we've you know, taken a concept, you know, played around until we found a version we want and then increased the quality of it, I'm gonna enlarge this. And the way I can do that is this is a smart object. If I double click it, it's just gonna open up like it's a new image and I can just enlarge this right here. So I'm gonna go up to image, image size, and I can change the size within Photoshop or an even higher quality way to do this is with Topaz Gigapixel, which if we go up to file, automate. We've got Topaz Gigapixel AI. I've got another video that goes into great detail on how this works. So I'll post a link for that below. Highly recommend it. I've also got a, a discount code you can use for it. So I'm going to click on this and it's also an AI. So we're using AI to improve our AI, which is kind of fun. I'm going to slide this here so we can better see this guy. And I'm on this uh, split view so I can move this slider and see on the left would be kind of just a basic enlargement and on the right is the AI enlargement. And you can see that it does a really nice job of pulling out the important details without adding a bunch of noise. Now I still have little things like this wrinkle in the background or things I might retouch later, but I think it gives us a really nice version of the image. And you see down below here, the resulting increase in resolution because I've chosen 4X, I could go all the way up to 6X, but at four I get 
2000 by 2500. If we go up to 6x, let's see how that looks. Still looking pretty nice and detailed. And now we're up to you know 3000 by almost 4000 pixels. Plenty of detail, but I'm just going to stick with the basic enlargement here at 4x. Click on apply. And now I've got that version that I can keep processing to do things like, you know, clone and fix that background, maybe clean up that, you know, weird kind of almost hair on the ear. There's just always going to be little things you got to work with on an AI. But I think we've got a, a nice looking result with great resolution that we can play with. And so now I'm going to close this out and let's take a look at another way we can use this. Let's close this. I'm also going to close this. We're going to work from an existing image. So for this next thing, I'm going to go and open up an image that I was working on before, which is the self-portrait. And we can use this in, in really any resolution we want, but higher resolution is usually better, at least as high resolution as whatever you're going to export uh, here. And I'm going to go and create a variation of this at the full square resolution of 1024 by 1024. Let's take our quality back down to 25 for kind of quick playing around. And I'm going to grab my text prompt here where I've got this description, which is asking for sunglasses, a leather jacket, cinematic look, and converting into a charcoal sketch. So I'm going to try and take a photograph of myself and turn it into a sketch. Now, if I want to just explore, I can clear the seed and just take a look at some different versions. So let's try and create maybe just like four different versions. Click on Dream and see what we get from it. And here we actually got a bunch of pretty random results. And there's two reasons for that. One, I forgot to check Use Document Image. If you don't turn this on, you don't work from what you're seeing here. So I needed to turn that on. And the other thing is this AI, it was trained with images that were 512 by 512. When you go to larger versions, it's not really quite sure what to do sometimes, and it adds extra heads or other details sometimes for people. It works better for landscapes. So if you run into this weird look and you're not supplying an image, try using the lower resolutions. But I'm going to redo this again by clicking on Dream, now using my document image. And this will work well with high resolution because it's going to stick pretty close to this image here. Now, notice when I clicked Use Document Image, it's saying 50% of the image as a default. So I'm going to get something here in the results that probably don't deviate a whole lot from what I started with. And I may want to give it a little more freedom in a moment. We'll see what it does. So we can try clicking on this first one. That's a little goofy looking. That's, you know, certainly getting closer to the idea of what I had. You notice like the, you know, the jackets kind of changed to more like a leather jacket look. The glasses got darkened down a bit, but it's sticking pretty close to what I gave it. I don't think any of these are all that different. This one looks, some of these are just kind of a fail. But let's go and we need to hide or remove these. We're still seeing the original image because I want to make sure that when I click Dream, it's working from whatever is live on the screen. And let's give the prompt more weight and the image less. So I'm going to slide the image strength down to 35. I think that's usually a pretty good number to go with. And we'll click Dream. And we'll get some versions here that I think should look probably a little closer to what I envisioned with the prompt because I'm giving it more room to deviate from the original image. And so here you can see that we've given it more room. So now the sunglasses look more like sunglasses. The leather jacket looks more like a leather jacket. Um, you know, there's a variety of results here, but I think as we've given more weight to the prompt and less to the image, we're getting closer to something that probably represents the vision here. And I played with this for a bit to find a seed that I really liked. So let's go and use that seed. I'm just going to set it to one image and hide these other variations and let's go grab that seed. So here's the seed that I liked before with this prompt. And this seed, as long as I use the same prompt and same size, I should get the same result that I saw earlier. And let's go kick up the quality a bit to like 50 or so and try and generate this one. And so let's take a look at that. And you know, I think that's a pretty good rendition. I mean, it looks like a real leather jacket. It's got, you know, obviously a metal zipper. We got the sunglasses. It clearly looks like a charcoal sketch to me. I mean, I think that's a pretty interesting way to transform an image from here to here with this text-based guidance. I mean, you can imagine all sorts of ways of taking your images and creating derivations of them. And, and there's no reason that I can't fade back in, you know, elements of the original image or other concept art to really push this and, and do some super interesting things. Let's go clear this out and let's take a look at another way we might do this. I'm going to go back to my text prompt 
And what if we just grab the term Ryan Reynolds? Grab that. So, you know, we're going to name a, a famous actor, someone that the AI would definitely know. And I'm going to grab the seed, so we're not playing around too much here, and grab a seed that I thought worked and generate this. Now, with this, it's going to be trying to do something that looks like a person it knows and then blend it with the image that I've given it, but also within these constraints. So what we should end up with is something that kind of looks like Ryan Reynolds wearing sunglasses and a leather jacket in this pose. And so when we click on this, I mean, that definitely looks like a high quality sketch and still with a leather jacket and the sunglasses and a consistent hair. I think that's really interesting. Not that I need to create renditions of celebrities. That's not really something I would personally use this for. But if, what I think is interesting about that is you can imagine a future state where maybe I have someone who's posed in a certain way I like, and I could transfer the face of another person and create some kind of mashup. Not something I can do today, but you can imagine instead of referencing text of something the AI knows, maybe I could supply a second document. I mean, that might be the kind of thing we'll see in the years to come to create a transfer of style and ideas and merge all these things together, which I think is just absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at one more thing. We just want to be really kind of whimsical and, and fun. Let's go and I'm going to grab this next description. So I'm going to take myself and transform this time uh, wearing a hoodie, no smile, Let's have a buzzed hair. We'll do a pencil drawing by a criminal sketch artist. And I put in armed and dangerous, do not approach. Because, uh, you know, those are words that you might see associated with criminal sketch art normally in the news. So I'm going to see what that gets for us. And let's go grab the seed that I used before. Put that in. And we'll go and generate this version. And we'll load that up. And you can see that's done a nice job of making me look uh, like kind of a thug. So you can see there's just all sorts of interesting ways you can take an image right from this earlier image where I'm smiling and I'm happy and, and now I've got no smile and I look kind of menacing uh, as a sketch drawing. There are all sorts of interesting things you can do. And then from here, you can just push so much further, all these interesting things you can do. And there's no reason we can't take this and uh, create a color version of it. I can go uh, in Photoshop, go to filter, neuro filters, and go grab the, uh, the colorize and generate a color version of that sketch. So again, using AI to transform another AI or the clone tool or whatever you might want to use. I'm not going to do that here, but just trying to show the myriad ways you can be creative with AI based art merged perhaps with your own original art and generate something entirely new. Now click to this next video to learn how to make beautiful enlargements using Topaz Gigapixel AI.